Hey guys, what's up? So basically, we are back to the environment and ecology series. Since from part 1.1 to part 1.9, I have already covered the major portion of ecology as well as ecosystems and all the different terminologies, different type of soils. We have covered light, we have covered air, and all those things which are necessary for understanding this base. Now we move on to the part 2.1. It will be dealing with biodiversity and E and E means environment and ecology. So obviously this is presented by me and this is an introduction to the biodiversity. This is a YouTube channel Unacademy. So spread the word of this revolution as much as you can because I am doing this for the people who cannot afford coaching or who cannot come to Delhi to pay such high fees or because of financial constraints they are unable to leave their jobs. And want to crack this examination or otherwise people who wants to seek knowledge any doubt any query whatsoever you can comment below the video on youtube or on the facebook page facebook.com slash official so anyway we will be dealing with biodiversity bio means living diverse means varied so biodiversity literally means the diversity or the degree of variation in the life so anyway, this word is popularized by a guy called Edward Wilson. Please just remember his name. It might come in pre sometimes. It is the degree of variation of life. This is as simple definition of biodiversity as it can be. Or it can also be said totality of genes, species and ecosystem of a region. So basically it includes all the level of diversity it can be either genetic diversity or specific diversity or ecosystem diversity so earth basically it is unique in two part first it has life which itself is unique till now we have not found any other planet which supports life secondly it's also have enormous diversity in life which can be quantified under three headings so both increased variation as well as existence of life makes us unique three headings i have already told you it can be other genetic diversity which includes all the genes and all that crap it's alleles alleles means different type of genes for example for tall it will be t and t so this represent tall this represent dwarf for like pink color that can be purple for p and p for paper pink so this is dominant this is recessive they are alleles you must have read about mendel and all in the classes so this is what they talk about and its variation also in a single species so this is genetic diversity in a single species so this is your total genetic pool so that is why we do not marry with our relatives because the genetic diversity is very small in the relatives and chance of inbreeding depression becomes more and more if we marry in our relatives so we marry as far as we can so example india has thousands of different strains of rice and mangoes so everyone knows that there are 20000 to 50000 species of rice which exist here secondly there is a species diversity which are the effective number of different species in a region so there are two types one is species richness so it includes the simple count of species and it can be species evenness and it quantifies see, see simple species richness means this is the area so it will count the number of species which exist in this particular area it's very simple but when it comes to species evenness you will not only count the number of species but you will count out if this area has all the species or not if this area has the similar species or not it might also be possible na, ki this is an area and this entire region has only lions and this has the rest of the animals so that is not species evenness that is only species richness so species richness is the simple count while species evenness is the abundance of the species over equalness or abundance in very small areas of a larger area Finally, ecological diversity means as many ecologies, ecological systems or biomes as possible in a particular region. So that will be qualified as ecological diversity. So there are 17 countries which are called as mega biodiverse countries. So example, Lotic means low try, low try means it's running. So that is running fresh water. So it will have more biodiversity because of mixing of nutrients, energy, sunlight, etc. Then in lentic, lentic means lethargic, so it is a stagnant fresh water like pond, swamp, so it has less biodiversity. So biosphere, now uh, the term biospheres, all of us have seen that particular diagram. So this is atmosphere, this is lithosphere, this is hydrosphere. So this portion does not support life, it can be Mariana Trench, this portion can be stratosphere, and this portion can be 
huge volcanic eruptions but where they meet this sweet portion is called as either sometimes it's also called as ecosphere so many people have heard of term ecosphere also called as biosphere ecosphere basically includes all the spheres including biosphere so ecosphere is a very large term so biosphere is a sweet spot where atmosphere lithosphere and hydrosphere interact and they give rise to life life is present almost everywhere on earth obviously but there are certain exceptions like extreme top of mount everest that is 8848 meters life is not existent then extremes of poles also rarely any life form will find mariana trench very very rare and if you go very high in atmosphere where ozone exists ozone layer i am talking about so there also life is very scarce or absent then ecosphere i have already talked talk to you this is a diagram which can be seen sometimes and this uh, so biosphere basically is all subsuming they sometimes use interchangeably also but there is not concrete definition of ecosphere now there are two similar terms bio prospecting and bio piracy so piracy is obviously a negative term which includes you do exploitation okay it's okay but you don't pay them fair and equitable share so no fair and equitable share is paid to them plus you don't also give them recognition you come here to india you take neem you make antibiotic and you sell it for billion dollars but you don't give contribution to the locals who knew its uses for last 2000 years but lack of awareness and ignorance they did not patent it so basically neither you give compensation nor you give recognition and you use indigenous form of knowledge which was already existing for past 2 to 3000 years this is biopiracy however bio prospecting is a very positive term so it is discovery and commercialization of new products based on biological resources so it includes you go there acquire indigenous knowledge you give fair and equitable share you give them recognition and then you screen their bioactive compounds for developing drugs and other medicinal and health supplements now biodiversity hotspot is a term which is very commonly heard it was given by norman myers basically biogeographic region and it has a significant reservoir of biodiversity plus it is under threat from humans and total 25 areas are classified as hotspot in the world so there are three conditions which has to be satisfied first is high species diversity it has to be very very diverse that is number of species should be very high then high degree of endemism what do you mean by endemism i'll tell you in the next part endemism basically means the species which is found in only in that area and nowhere else in the world finally there had to be threat obviously so there needs to be rapid loss of biodiversity so exact criteria which qualifies it as an hotspot is it must contain at least 0.5% or 1500 species of vascular plants vascular plants includes xylem and phloem so they are basically the gymnosperms angiosperms etc and they must be endemic to that particular region and it must lost at least 70% of its primary vegetation so this is called as endemism plus loss of biodiversity and mind you india has two hot spots and not three so basically people uh, they differentiate northeast and himalayas region sometimes but they are one and the same this is called as indo burma region and includes myanmar also and secondly western ghats which includes sri lanka also so india has two its hot spots so uh, till now it's okay i guess so moving forward now we have a concept called as mega biodiverse countries so mega biodiverse countries are a group of countries that have the majority of earth species okay very very simple no logic at all they are very very rich in species and they are mostly tropical or they are subtropical they will not be found in european climates ever ever so india is also one of 17 mega diverse countries now you can walk through them brazil colombia ecuador peru venezuela then mexico united states then southeast asian countries are very very rich india china indonesia malaysia philippines papua new guinea and finally we have australia drc madagascar and south africa now ab aise to maine padha diya aapko maine bol diye jo naam the but it's very easy to forget them you will say ki ye to hum bhi kar lete but now the trick is to integrate them with the map so that is the best trick which will help you remember these things so now we will try to remember by that trick so i was telling you 12 countries are there which are sovereign plus two are non sovereign so french guinea is non sovereign these are falkland islands they are under british overseas territories disputed by argentina 
and these are the 12 major countries so this is how you remember stuff when it comes to biodiversity and everything can be related to it politics international relation geography everything should be related with world map it becomes very very easy now the number of species i'll go quickly about it so there are total 1.9 million species on record out of which 20% are same so 1.5 million in total are on record but the total yeah, estimated is 8.74 so only 20% have been discovered 80% are yet to be discovered in india 22% are only discovered so of all the 70% recorded are animals while the 30% are plants obviously uh, rest are like uh, they are gray area fungus sometimes are not included in either of them and there are lots of other prokaryotes and all so among animals insects are clearly dominating they are a phylum arthropoda they are more than 70 percent and they might be up to 90 percent of all the animals so approximately 50 percent of all recorded species are insects there is no doubt about it and finally the number of fungus is totally more than the number of fishes amphibians reptiles and mammals combined anyway so total number of eukaryotic species 8.74 so obviously 80 percent are yet to be discovered there is no logic in it i have already told you 1.5 out of 8.74 you can do the math because the synonymous uh, part is also taken otherwise it's 1.9 and it does not include prokaryotes like bacteria why we can include their molecular or biochemical criteria but they will alone will run in billions or at least thousands uh, hundreds of millions so they are not included finally fish are 50 percent among vertebrates amphibians 11 percent mammals 9 birds 16 reptile 16 boring now see this is also very boring information but how to make it funny to remember i'll tell you at the end of this slide india has 2.4 percent of world's land area everyone knows that 3.28 million square kilometers everyone knows it and it has 8.1 percent of global biodiversity that is why it is a mega biodiverse countries only 22 percent of the species have been recorded so far so this is how you conclude a good answer make better efforts endeavor to record the large majority of species which are yet to be discovered and they become instinct even before we record do you know that 99 percent of all the species that ever existed on this planet are already extinct and know that haha Finally, the number of species is affected by speciation, that is process of creation of species versus extinction, that is process of removal of species. Speciation is process of creation, extinction is process of destruction. So in evolution, it follows from natural selection. So finally, I'll show you species distribution here. So you can see more than 50% of all the plants, all the species ever, more than 50% is insects and you can see these are the approximately 70 percent more than 70 percent is animals and you can see there are viruses and protozoa and plants are not more than 22 to 23 percent fungus are kept sometimes alike sometimes in the same category but anyway this is how it goes monera is prokaryotes and this is how you remember very very easily so this graph will stick i have made it blue because fishes live in blue so 50 percent of all vertebrates are blue Finally, this is green. So this is 9% mammals. Then there are 16% birds, 16% reptiles and 11% of amphibians. Green because mammals usually prefer green grass and rest you can see. So anyways, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this introductory video. I tried my best to do what I could do. Please hit the like button so that I know that you have enjoyed this video. I tried to include all the graphs, charts, diagrams, maps, tricks everything i included in it so i hope you like the video this is the facebook page where you leave your doubts and queries i'll try to resolve them and spread the word and help those who cannot afford this coaching and who have a burning desire to join this job to make a difference you can also tweet to me at my twitter handle at roman thank you for watching the video have an awesome day you guys are awesome